Hello and welcome everybody to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we are going to paint a little field of daisies. Part of my hashtag small art challenge 2022. This is the Turner acrylic gouache and that was the Prussian blue. I've got some of the permanent green light, permanent green dark, permanent yellow deep, and white. I'm going to give it a couple blobs of white just in case. I'm doing this on a four inch by four inch canvas panel. This is uh, MDF wood, not the cardboard on the inside. It's triple primed cotton canvas. And I really like these. They come in like 12 packs, 24 packs, 48 packs. I'm going to paint the background, but I have one that's already painted. So after I get it painted, I'm going to set that one aside and we'll start painting on this one. I'm trying to get this done really quick. And I want a nice dark background. So I need a little bit of burnt sienna to make my Prussian blue super, super dark if I need it. This is just a three quarter inch angle brush, but it could be any brush, use what you have. You can use any gouache, you could use any, you, you can use anything, acrylic paint, um, whatever you want to use. Yeah, I am gonna add a little bit of that go because I want this really dark grab a little bit of that blue now this is going to be a lot darker than the uh, background that I already have but it's just because I found that background that was already done um, I might put a little bit of this onto that one for now, we're just getting a background on. I might even put just a tiny touch of this white into it to kind of give a little bit of depth, a little bit of shadow feel to it. Ooh, and it's so shiny you can't see. All right, there. But that is pretty much all I'm going to do. One of the cool things is this paint dries matte. I like that. That actually looks like a night sky. But I think that, yeah, see, this is a lot brighter. I'm going to go ahead and put a thin coat of some of this dark on it. I'm not worried about getting paint on my table. It's a craft, it's craft room. So it's like, for heaven's sakes, I am not, I'm not that person. I am that person whose table ends up shrinking the space shrinks. There we go. So now we've got light and dark. See how quick that went on there though? The second one went faster than the first one. I'm going to dry this real quick and be right back. Do is grab a small angle brush. This is a number 10. It's about a 3 8 inch. Get this 3 8 inch angle brush wet. I'm going to take some of that green and a little bit of the blue because first off I want to put leaves in the background that are a little bit darker. I want to have three colors of leaves basically. So now I'm taking my brush and I'm going to go in and see if I can get some pretty little leaves in just using the angle of the brush and kind of twisting it. Go back in. I'm, I'm not really liking this brush very much. It's, it's a little bit too flop, uh, not floppy, but a little bit too um, frayed out. But for these little leaves going in underneath, not, it's not too big of a deal. 
and these are just going in filling in the background a lot making kind of leafy random marks the detailed leaves are going to be coming on top and I'm going to do those with a round brush if I had a dagger brush I'd probably use that for these dark green on top of a dark color is going to dry darker <laughs> than you would expect because it's sort of going to absorb the dark background but generally dark colors dry lighter light colors dry darker on gua with gouache so now I'm moving more into the regular green Look at that. Just mush those, just mushing those uh, leaves in. The flowers are going on last. I'm, I'm doing this completely in that background uh, to foreground pattern. I'm not putting them straight on top of the other leaves. I am overlapping them so that we can get a nice variation. I am kind of starting to connect some of the leaves up into little three leaf or four leaf sections. This is a great painting for beginners because really get, a, get color on your brush and just go moosh. <laughs> And it helps you to learn how your brush moves, how your hand needs to move to make your brush strokes. I'm gonna add just a touch of that lighter green into it now. And I'm not gonna put a ton of these bright ones on here because I am doing the flowers too. And I really want my flowers to be the brightest. So we're just going to drop a few of these brighter green leaves on. Now your light colors will dry a little bit darker, so I might end up having to go in and do a little bit of other stuff. Play with your brush, twist it, see see what uh, see what works for you. There we go. We're ready to start putting some flowers on as soon as this is dry. You want to dry between the elements. So I'm going to dry this really quick and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna take a round brush. I really don't want green in my, in my brush. So I'm going to get some clean water. I'm going to actually put blue gray that I made. So that way we can get some variation on our flowers. This is just a General's white chalk pencil, and I'm just going to give myself a few cent, you know, a few. The paint is pretty much dry. Don't put, um, don't put chalk over wet areas. I'm giving myself some centers here. I don't want to go too overboard, but I don't want it to be too little either. This is very doodly, so put it where it makes sense for you and don't worry about it being, you know, having to be perfect. I'm taking my round brush and I'm going to start at the center. Actually, I'm gonna start outside and come into the center. There we go. Start outside, come into the center. I'm using the tip of that brush and letting it just become flowers. Tip of the brush on the outside. Because I want the little pointy petals. Look at that. Setting it down and sort of mushing towards the middle. 
I am going to rotate my canvas because that makes it easier for me. Always make your painting easier for yourself. Just load your brush up and go dippity dot, huh? This is super easy. I learned how to make these type of flowers when I was in first grade. And I made a card for my mom and dad for Valentine's Day that is still hanging up on their bedroom wall. It was kind of the first time when I realized that I was, I could be an artist. And I was only six when I learned that I, I liked making things that people would be able to enjoy and to keep, put in a frame, hang on the wall. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. So pretty, so easy. And the tip of your, of your petals will be whatever the tip of your brush is. So the tip of my brush is very pointy. So the tip of my petals, very pointy. Don't worry about making them perfect. If you cover up your circle, it's okay. Now I will possibly come back in and put a few petals back on after I put the centers in. Just so that I can have a little more dimension. And that's probably when I will take the bright white also. But see, this, I had somebody say that they really missed my tutorials. So I hope that this is one of those little tutorials that you were looking for. This would be a beautiful card for someone if you painted it on watercolor paper or mixed media paper. You could do this with any opaque media. So gouache, acrylic, um, I'm not sure how, how you do it with oil, but you probably could do that. Something similar with oil. If I was to do this, I don't know, watercolor would be a little bit tricky because we are laying over, but you could do the background with watercolor and then do your petals, your flowers with gouache. So, and if you only grab a tube of white gouache, you can make your watercolors into colored gouache. Oh, look at that. Ooh, okay. I'm going to just tuck a few little, just a few little spots of white that look kind of like they're coming out from the pet, uh, out from the leaves. Just a few. Just tuck them in. Almost like little bunny ears sticking out, huh? There we go. All right, I think that's good. I'm going to rinse my brush, dry this, and come back with my bright yellow. So something I want you to notice here is that I have depth and dimension in these flowers and I don't have to go in and put any shadows and highlights on them if I don't want to. I'm going to grab just a smidge of burnt sienna and mix it with that yellow. And I'm going to go and just tap dap, <laughs> just tap it in, tap in my centers. Not worried about it being perfect. If it's too transparent, I can go back in and put another layer of the color on. I 
or just get a thicker amount on my brush to start off with. Just going to put those centers in. They don't have to be perfectly center and they don't have to be perfectly round. I like it when they're a little, ah, well, I'm going to clean that off. So how you clean the paint off when it's real fresh, get it wet and dab. Get it wet and dab. And rinse your brush each time. And look at that. Now, my, my petals kind of broke down just a little bit here because I rubbed over them. Look at that. Bingo. All fixed. Don't fret. Don't fret. Don't get flustered or frustrated by it. If you drop your brush on your painting, it's okay. You can fix it. Cool thing about painting like this is that I could have let it dry and just go in and just gone back and painted it, just painted it again. So don't, don't get too worried or flustered over it. Now, something that I'm noticing right there, I want to use a little bit of that burnt sienna and make a shadow. So I'm just grabbing some burnt sienna. and making some shadows in here. I'm not drawing it all the way around though. I'm just giving it a part of a shadow. I'm not, not trying to make it an outline around the center. I'm kind of going around an edge. Those look like happy little daisies. I'm going to sign it. And I think I'll take just a little bit of this kind of blue and the white. Maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna in it. Sign it. And I am done. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to do cute little daisies. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and all those good things. And there we are. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you back here really soon. Bye-bye.